Look at that. You pull back far enough and you can see the entire solar system all at once. All dancing around each other. Hello everyone and welcome back to Outer Wilds. Now we ended the previous video with a number of leads to follow up on. The mysterious race that once inhabited our solar system. The, not the title drop, but outer worlds that no one's ever explored before. The technology that's been left behind, but the thing that I'm more interested in right now is figuring out what happened to our missing astronaut. We're hearing something that seems like it could be his harmonica right here on our homeworld of Timber Hearth. Let's equip our signal scope and try and figure out where that's coming from. Uh, these guys are not great at following up on leads. It wouldn't be there. It wouldn't be right there. But there are some things, some points of interest on this world that we could still take a look at. Here's some kind of... Yes, right here! What is this? You know what? I mean, that looks, based on our map image, that it might maybe be a piece of Dark Bramble? Oops. We haven't actually been there yet, but surely there's something. All right, let's unbuckle. Do I need a suit for right here? I'm going to take it anyway and just see what happens. I gotta be honest, I'm so far not a huge fan of dying and respawning back where we were in some kind of weird time loop. I mean, last time the sun basically exploded and killed us, not really sure how I could have survived that. The only thing I can think of is that maybe I had to avoid line of sight to the sun? I don't know. Wait, there's someone down there. There is. Who are you? And what is that? Tektite. Oh, we've met you before. Hey, oh, hatchling. Thought you were taking that tin can of yours into space today. What are you still doing here? Me? I saw something crash over the horizon and didn't like what I was seeing in the pictures my little scout was sending back. So I thought I'd come over here myself and take a look. Is that a dark bramble seed? You think so? It's nothing I've ever seen on Timber Hearth before, so you're probably onto something there. Whatever it is, it put down its roots in a hurry. I don't like the look of this thing, Hatchling, and that's a fact. I think I'll set Marl and Hal loose on it. Best get rid of this mess sooner rather than later. And no one can remove an unwanted plant faster than a tree keeper can. I'll have to get it I'll have to get a look at what's inside the seed first, though. Don't want to set anybody to hacking up a potentially dangerous plant without a better idea of what's lurking inside there. Tough can help me haul the old scout launcher over here. Obviously the opening is too small for someone to fit inside. Anyway. I'm not going to blindly stick my hands into anything that looks as unpleasant as that seed does. That's a good way to lose an arm or two. So it seems like this bramble seed is actually... I don't know, like some kind of invasive species? Trying to consume everything it can get its hands on? So for now, I guess I'll just continue to explore other sites on this planet? Yeah, I remember this. There's like a weird... It looks like a landing site within this crater. Not crater, but geyser, I think. Let's bring the suit just in case. Two ways we can potentially go. Oh, this is deep in here. Translator, yes, this definitely belongs to them. Mining site 2B. 
Oh, it's another one of you. You're used almost exactly like a mouse pointer. Controls activated by line of sight. Or rather by eye movements. Uh, which I suppose makes sense given the number of eyes that were apparently on these guys. All of this is on our own planet. Hello, what are you? It's one of them. Can we get anything out of you? No. What is that? In the darkness, I can't see, but there's definitely a huge space with something... something running down and going through, all through the caverns. Uh, how do I cross this gap without hitting the water? I can't get very much out of my jetpack. I don't know if I can advance from here. Not safely, anyway. But I can climb down here. Oop. Oop. What is all this? Can I jump down into it? Is that a good idea? There's like a little cave back here, but it doesn't look like there's anything in it. I'm not quite sure what else to try. Let's do it. Whoa! Okay, this is the outcome I was hoping for, and up and away! Whoa! It brought me up to the top of the chamber. I really lost my sense of direction there for a second. Yeah, they're mining these minerals. Maybe they have something to do with the zero-gravity properties of that one cave? Oh, and there's more writing to uncover. I love this! We're doing space archaeology! Wino says, I'm still amazed by how much ore the Ash Twin Project requires. The Ash Twin Project, yeah. Psychad says, isn't this the ore for the, removing, for the remaining towers being built on Ash Twin? The completed towers I've seen are quite large. No. The materials for those towers is all being taken from Ash Twin. The ore we're mining here will be used to craft an immensely thick protective shell. I'm sorry, what's happening? Does it have something to do with that right there? I am so confused about this mechanic. If it's a time loop, then maybe I'm supposed to... Because it seems like the things that I learn are saved. So, like, maybe I have to keep repeating the same day, the sort of, like, Groundhog Day loop, until I can figure out what it is I'm supposed to be doing to prevent this? I don't know. That's all I can think of. The other thing I can think of is a bug. Inside 2B. Okay, you get up here. No. The material for those towers is all being taken from Ash Twin. The ore we're mining here will be used to craft an immensely thick protective shell that will physically seal off the chamber inside Ash Twin's core. If they're sealing off all entrances, I hope they planned accordingly. How does this pun translate? I thought I had forbidden your apprentice from making puns, Coleus. How else would he improve? They had a sense of humor, I see. I'm relieved by our clan's decision to use Timberhearth's ore only for constructing the shell. If eventually life on this planet were to evolve to the point of advanced metallurgy, I'm confident we won't have destroyed their ability to create. So already we've learned that 
these these things, they were much like us. Only they seem to have been faced with quite a big problem, some kind of urgent project that needed to be completed. Ash Twin Projection Stone. What does that do for us? And another one of those things. Also, how do I switch? Okay. So it's in our hands. My gratitude for the latest shipment. We know. This ore should be the last we'll need for the Ash Twin project. So they did complete it. Once we finish the shell that seals off the central chamber, we'll check to ensure there are no longer any physical entrances. Ramy and I will be checking the interior, and then the exterior for cracks. Our final safety check. Can I offer an extra set of eyes for this final check? Specifically mine. If my work here is complete, I'd be delighted to help. We'd be grateful if you would. The more eyes, the better, as the smallest flaw or opening in the shell that protects the Ash Twin project could lead to disaster. But what is the Ash Twin project? They were constructing towers for it, but that's all we know. Is there anything else we can do here? We could place it there as well, presumably. What is this? What does that mean? That one is glowing. We can't seem to use any of our kit in the meantime. Okay, so some of them are glowing, some are not. Does that mean things need to be found and brought back here? Okay, we'll have to make a note of this. What about, yes, down this way? Even more of these bones. A whole lot of them died here. This... This is the other side of where we came in. What happens if we try to jump into the waterfall? Come on, swim up, swim up, swim up, swim up! Uh, can we just not swim at all? Now what is that thing we see getting launched at the start of each day? Each loop, rather. We'd have to be pretty fast to catch up with it, but one of these times I think we should try it. I just saw a weird red light in the distance. What is that? It's quite far away. Can we maybe intercept it? Oh. That's the... That's the satellite in a polar orbit. Yeah, I bet we can reach it. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. We haven't actually tried to rendezvous with a craft yet. At least not successfully. There you are. Let's go. Oh no, now you're actually gaining speed on me. Alright, if we can get close enough to you and then match your velocity, I think then we should be good. Start slowing down. It's orbital rendezvous in KSP all over again. Alright, come on, slow down, 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 slow down more than that, please! Woo! Okay. Let's move in more slowly this time. There we are. Huh. Who said rendezvous was difficult? But what can we do once we reach you? I wonder if we can actually go on EVA or if we'll have to somehow land or dock with you. There you are. 
Okay, our velocity is now perfectly matched. Let's see if we can't go on EVA. Ooh, we can! That is so cool. All right, what can we do with you? Ah, uh, recording. Gabbro here, checking in on the deep space satellite per ground control's request to check out possible equipment problem. See, Hornfells? I do too, Eric. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind being a satellite. It's peaceful out here among the distant stars and the soft, velvety darkness. Bet it's awfully nice for naps, too. Oh, right, the lens. All right, little satellite, let's see what the trouble is. Huh. Everything looks A-OK, -okay, ground control. No dust or scratches on the lens, and no evidence of sparking or violent explosions. Guess that rules out an equipment malfunction after all. Hear that, pal? You're in great shape. Keep up the good work out here. Aww. What can we do with you? Howdy, everyone. <laughs> uh, since I'm not scheduled to come out here, I bet I just startled the absolute heck out of them. Uh, but it doesn't look like I can actually do anything with it. Just read that note. So, he was sent out here to investigate some kind of anomaly on the lens. Does that mean that it was actually seeing something out in space? Something that was attributed to some kind of optics failure? Well, I think... Uh, granted, that sun's probably going to go soon. I bet we can use what it looks like as an indicator of how long we have. But I think the next thing we have to do is investigate Ash Twin. If we send that probe out, what can that tell us? I think at this point we'd be better off heading in ourselves. I'm sure it has a use, but I haven't figured out what it is yet. Ash Twin, here we come. You know what? I bet that bridge is what it is. That must be the tower they were talking about. An actual structure made by these creatures. Hang on, let's get in there. Where to first? I think Ash Twin is where these structures were being built, so that seems like the best thing. I want to find out what these towers actually are and what they do. Maybe it can give us a clue as to what's going on with our situation. Oops. There's one tower surrounded by these shields. They almost look like some kind of reflectors, maybe? Oh, we are so close to the sun. What are they, and what do they do? And it sure does look inviting as a landing platform, doesn't it? There we are. Oop, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> We're tipping over the edge. Let's use that... Vertical view. Oh, it's another one of those things. Oh, look at that. I bet it leads inside the planet. But it only goes up. It only takes us back here. We can't fight against its forces. Okay, so what do we do then? I know there's more on this planet. Oh. 
it's like it's being poured into the core of the other planet. But why? Let's check out everything we can on this surface. It's like some kind of container. Whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa! It's actually being, oh, with the orbit of the planet, it's actually pulling that thing alongside it. Core to core, that is nuts. Okay, well, I am now <laughs> literally on a different planet. How do I get back with no ship? Some kind of structure. Oh, it goes down into the deep canyons. I think what's critical right now to figuring out this apocalyptic loop is going to be figuring out why they were building whatever this is. Unidentified signal nearby. Something really weird is going on here. What is this? Some kind of crash device? It almost looks like a giant mining drill. Well, whatever that contact is, it's 40 meters away. I really wish this jetpack would actually get me something. Escape pod 2, distress beacon. How long do we have? Uh, come on. What do we do with this? Can we interact with it in some way? Get some kind of information out of it? Oh, it leads into here. Oh, come on. What are you? Oh, and know my recording. Anona, we heard that name before. We need status reports for all systems, but initial things first. Is everyone unharmed? Our escape pod's passengers are afraid, but physically well. Everyone survived the crash. That is a relief, at least. You have my gratitude, Burr. Were you able to find the other escape pod's distress signals? I can hear both signals somewhere in the star system, but I don't believe either escape pod crashed on the same planet as us. Okay, so there are two more of these out there. At least we get to keep the information in the ship's log. This is an honest-to-god know-my ship. Something went wrong here. Launching escape pod three. Now launching escape pod two. Oh, I see, hang on, wait, okay. Uh, flight log, escape pod two, vessel has been mortally injured. Emergency sequence activated, awaiting departure from vessel. Escape pod three, now launching, escape pod two. Alert, collision imminent, preparing for impact. Scanning external environment, scan complete. An external temperature is prohibitively high. Verdict, inhospitable. Do not seek shelter on planet's surface. So they survived the initial crash, but this wasn't exactly some place they could get out and stretch their legs. The heat from the star system's sun is more bearable below the surface. When our escape pod punctured this planet's surface, it broke into what scans show as a cave system with much cooler air. I would recommend we seek a site down there to build a long-term shelter, Anona. 
But these passages, these passages are a maze. Even with this danger, they're still our best chance for survival. We'll form teams and descend into the caves to look for a shelter site. We can mark our findings on the walls to avoid becoming irreversibly lost. Be cautious, everyone. And be aware of the sand as you search. It appears to be rising gradually. It's entirely possible that they were actually pulled out of here. Okay. We have no way of checking on the status of the sun. But these caves are at least somewhat survivable, it seems. Mm -hmm. Huh, there's some kind of plant life down here. Doesn't look like the kind of plant life I want to touch, but it survives down here nevertheless. Emergency escape hatch. Oh, this is what blew off the back. They were really lucky to land where they did. Keep moving, friends. There's nothing of interest at the end of this passage but rocks. And while these rocks are interesting, they can wait until a less urgent time. You know, the more I learn about these beings, the more I like them, the more their extinction or seeming extinction seems to be tragic. I mean, they're not all unlike us. And they seem to care about each other and have an amazing talent for cooperation. Do not follow this tunnel to its end. Coleus and I ex will examine the horror that lies at its terminus later. Provided we live through this. That seems like a tunnel for me, but not a tunnel for now. I want to document as much of this as I can before the next cycle. We found an enormous cavern at the end of this passage that appears promising. And I believe we could construct long-term shelter there. The cavern Melloray found is a wise choice for shelter. Could one of you mark directions for the others to follow? This is the start of the path to the shelter site. I have left directions to guide you there. Of note, we must hurry as the pathway there is filling with sand. Do not allow yourself to be buried by sand and make sure no one is lost. So there is a path, but it's a dangerous path. There may be some kind of Nomai colony deeper within here. Of note, this passage leads to breathable air. Refill your supply tank there. We cannot tell how far or deep these tunnels may wind, but do not linger, as the area is exposed to the heat of this alien sun. Oh, this is very dangerous. The sand rises, probably in sync with the orbit. Okay, um... So, each time, it'll pass around, and we'll have a brief window to explore, but once it begins rising, we'll have to begin seeking higher ground. Just how much will this fill? Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we can actually... Oh, we can make it out. We have to fight gravity, but we can do it. If we are to lose another cycle, I would want to do it researching the nature of this cave. Oh, there's so much to learn. I love it. I don't know if I like... Because it's seeming to be an intentional mechanic now. I don't know if I like this whole die-repeat thing. I mean, it's interesting, and it's applied in a cool way. I just think it's very counter to exploration. It seems like we do have a decent amount of time. I mean, I haven't been timing exactly how long it takes. But it doesn't feel like it's all that long. I just feel like it has potential to break pacing if we're exploring a place like this that requires a lot of our time. Okay, it's still rising. Just how far will it rise? Up into the ship, maybe? Uh, potentially... <laughs> potentially all the way to the other planet, now that I think about it. Rising still, 60 seconds oxygen. Uh, I think I'm dead no matter what. I can't get back to my ship. I can't explore the tunnels that lead to oxygen. 
I don't think I have any chance. Unless perhaps I can... Hang on. Now the sand is still rising even as that moves away. Alright, our new primary objective is going to be exploring the caves of Ember Twin. Let's slow it down. We've just got to figure out where we were before. And there is so much here. Wait. Oh, wait, that looks like one of ours. Yeah, there's a campfire and everything. Uh, you mind if I park alongside you, bud? Let's bring it in. No, not on top of that outcrop. Right next to our fellow traveler. Right here should be fine. All right. Put on our suit and see if we can't go say hi. Hardly night here, is it? All right, let's get over there. Uh, can we make that jump? We may have to walk across that gap. We can get something out of our jetpack, but not a whole lot. All we can do is get a little bit of extra distance. Oh, this is going to be a problem. Can't wait to meet you. There we are. We made it. Whew. And we can replenish our oxygen because you have grown yourself some trees. Oh, nice suit. And nice gear. Sure. Oh, we've heard so much about you. Goodness, it's you. Hello. I take it your first launch went well, then? Welcome to the Hourglass Twins. Oh, that's clever. Mind the sand now. What are you up to? Hornfell's asked me to update our star charts, so I'm out here observing. This is one of the best places in the solar system to spot astronomical events, you know. What's weird is, I've actually seen a couple of supernovae today. Usually I'd be fortunate to see just one. Keep an eye or four on the stars, and maybe you'll spot one yourself. Tell me, what can I do for you? I found something. Please do tell. I found your notes about the Atlarok's main crater. Did you? I hope they were useful. The planet I mentioned may have been frozen solid, or just partially made of ice, like a much colder giant's deep. It's hard to say. It used to be the fifth planet in our solar system. You'll notice, of course, that there is no such planet now. In its place is Dark Bramble, which... how to put this... grew into the space the fifth planet used to occupy. That is... Dark Bramble quite literally appeared at the center of the fifth planet and began destroying it from the inside out. And eventually, the planet shattered completely and its shards were flung across space. Some of these shards collided with the celestial bodies in our solar system, such as the Atlar Rock, which I believe is how its biggest crater was formed. And now it's not the only one. Okay, we're getting good info here. And of course, I need to roast marshmallows on everybody. I panicked a little bit, I forgot that there is oxygen here. Now it seems, based on what we read in the caves, that the Nomai also breathed oxygen. Alright, that's good. No. But now I've got to go. There's that tower over there. Maybe these will lead further into those same caves. YOLO, right? Let's break our fall! Oof. Let's see what's waiting for us inside here. I actually have no idea if these are even the same caves. 
But down there looks quite dangerous indeed. This just comes out on the other side. So this is all down in the canyons. There was once much more construction here. Bridges spanning the gorge. Look at all of this. I think I should head back the other way. I'm curious to know what was up those stairs past the cacti. Oh! Oh, what a lucky sight! Oh, it's like in a cycle, it just pulls from the center here. Alright, uh, back into the cave. Still got plenty of O2, plenty of fuel. And if I die, it's... well, it's not like it really matters. If we send the scout up there... Oh, it's already stopped somewhere, but it does provide a useful light. Alright, we'll have to use our... Oh, I'm such an idiot. I could have used this to, uh... I could have used this to look into the Bramble Seed. Okay. Let's jump above you. Up and over. Identified signal nearby. I'm assuming that's just my buddy, right? No, this is something different altogether. Cave shard, frequency discovered, quantum fluctuations. More writing. Coleus is missing. He vanished from the lake bed cave, the one at the bottom of the dry lake bed on the North Pole, several days ago, and we're unable to find any trace of him. I don't know how much air he had when he disappeared. I beg any friend reading this, help us recover Coleus. This rock is very familiar. Did you travel here, my sedimentary friend? Because your unique color and texture appears identical to a rock I met earlier. Wasn't this the same rock fragment in the cave we found at the bottom of the dry lake bed at the North Pole? Okay, so we're going to the North Pole to find... Hot Santa. We plan to re-examine the Northern Lake Bed Cave. May maybe our friendly rock will meet us down there. An update. Melora and I went back to the Lake Bed Cave and observed this rock again. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't. That means this rock wanders like the Quantum Moon does. How curious. It's gone! Okay, is there maybe perhaps some kind of intelligence to that? Maybe we can use our signal scanner to locate it. Let's get up, refuel our oxygen, and go see about that lake bed at the North Pole. Only issue is, how do I know which north is north? There's that ship again. Tell you what, can we perhaps fly into whatever this thing is? It looks like there is a landing pad there. The only thing is, it says like the North Lake Bed, but I have no idea how to identify what North actually is. All right, well anyway, let's switch to vertical view and try to bring her in for a landing. Oh, I just noticed the, uh, Little analog altimeter on our side there. In we go. Ooh. It's not actually standing up straight. 
But we can land on it, nevertheless. Oh, are those more of those crystals? This was some kind of landing site at one point. The shuttle is currently resting at the comet. The comet? Call the shuttle home. Activate the gravity cannon. Oh. These are controls. Well, what happens if we call the shuttle home? The sunless city. This must be what they ultimately built. But we have no way of getting through there right now. Maybe we can get through from the caves? Using the way they initially traveled here? What happens if we call the satellite home? Whoopsie daisy! Didn't realize it would teleport here. Um... Okay, I thought I'd have a moment to clear the way. What do I do? That's not good. Uh, let's go see if our buddy has any room at the campfire. Oh, hello. What is this? What are you? Oh, we can enter this way. I think this is where we just were. Look at these crystals. But it says ghost matter detected nearby. Hang on. If we use photo mode... Yeah. We want to avoid that. We can't use that. That sand down there is rising. Maybe now is just not the time for this. I would love to learn the exact nature of ghost matter as well. Maybe we can make it over there? There we are. Nothing in sight on that side. I think we're good to continue. Might as well get all we can out of this life, right? We need this anymore. Uh, it's filling up rapidly, but there is definitely... Yes, they built a whole new life underground. This place is filling with sand, but maybe before it gets us, we can... Uh, this isn't going to work out for us. We need to move. Okay, a lot of new points of interest on this planet. Gravity cannon. Yep, just came from there. Oh, hey, you finally decided to settle on a spot. I don't suppose you'll actually allow me to fix you in any way. Okay, so the plan is, on the next revive, we're going to come back here, bring the satellite back, and then when we've seen what we can do with that, we'll go down and explore this underground city some more. Huh. Guess I'm stranded for the rest of this cycle, then. see what happens if I do actually catch up with that pillar. Whoosh. Nope. It'll just surf me along here. 
rising up until these canyons are almost full. That is so cool. Come get me. Oh, I got sandblasted. At a certain point, I really wish they would let me just skip that cutscene. But man, it shows everything from what we've seen up until that point. So I remember, and presumably the Nomai remember as well. I just realized even my shadow has those ears. All right, let's get back up there, call that satellite, this time with our ship out of the way, and see what we can do with that. All right, there's you. This time around, we're gonna land on this edge over here for easy return. There we are, let's get a little further away from that edge, thank you, please. All right, now let's unbuckle ourselves and get our suit on. Wait, pre-flight checklist. Uh, freeze time while talking to others. Freezes time while talking to characters and reading journals or signs. This will prevent character animations from playing during conversation. Oh, that's something we can enable. Okay. Okay. So there are options as far as that mechanic of only having a limited time goes. I'm going to leave it as is for now, just because I don't fully understand the way it even works yet. Right, let's head down there. We. I really love the way this game is filling my head with so many questions, really leaving me with more questions than answers everywhere I go. And in doing so, despite its open-ended nature, it's really leaving me with... Well, it's leading me with a lot of direction. Oftentimes in games like this, I don't feel like I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but here, there's a lot of different leads for me to investigate. Get back here. No frequencies from you, but just what are you? I can climb inside. One of you didn't make it. It's sad to see so many corpses, given how we get the impression that they really cared about each other. I fear our situation may be dire. Pi, Poke, and I landed here on this comet not long after its arrival in the star system. Our shuttle's equipment heard strange energy readings coming from somewhere beneath the surface. Pi and Poke were able to locate a fissure in the ice in the comet's sunward side, and they descended inside to investigate the source of the readings. But. Pi and my sister have been gone for a long time now. They haven't contacted me since descending below the surface either. Should I leave the shuttle to look for them? I want to follow protocol, but I don't know what I'll do if they aren't well. Poke. Pi. Come back to me safely, my friends. So we will have to go investigate that comic, uh, comet at some point. I also haven't really been reading the ship log. Now, what are you? What did that do? Ooh. We're taking off! Uh... Where are we going? Oh. It's one of your suits. Huh, well I suppose we can't wear one, but I suppose this gives us an idea as to your actual upright physiology, right? And what are you? These look like seats, maybe.
Uh, we are currently very, very far from our ship, but maybe this will return us to the comet? I... Well, maybe each of these is a preset destination. Let's check our map to see where we are exactly. Wait, are we heading for the interloper? The interloper is the comet. No one's ever been here before. I was going to save this for basically last. We must be getting close then. Soon it'll be on our view. Wait, no. I think that was a coincidence. So where are we heading then? According to this, we're now coming back around, closer to our ship, maybe for another pass. I'm confused as to what it's actually doing right now. Perhaps right now it's just an orbit? What happens if we move this to the middle right now? We're back here. That's what they are. They're markings for different preset flights and locations. All right, that could be potentially really useful to us. Like a fast travel almost. Oops, not what I wanted to do. I'm really grappling with these controls here. Um, not that they're bad, it's just I'm not used to using a controller. All right, well, how did we get in here? There was something up top that we used. And hopefully we'll have enough time. Hopefully the sands haven't risen too much. Well, there is something over there. What are you? Some kind of hatch, maybe? Or just a piece of the craft that came off. The one that's crashed on the other side of the planet. Ooh, there's another patch of green right here. So what is this down this way? Is it maybe another device meant for... I mean, look, this clearly represents that one. Yes, they constantly monitor the locations of their given planet. This one's monitoring ours. It's not something we need to figure out. It's something that's currently in use, still working, however many eons later. This planet sometimes and only sometimes, has a moon. This is also of note. It disappears if no one is watching it. Isn't that a fascinating orbital characteristic? That must be the rock that we discovered down below. This is my first time encountering a natural satellite with the ability to vanish when not being watched. We should study it. Or even better, we should travel there. I agree. Our first step would be determining a method to track this phantom moon so that we can always know where it is. I think my scanner might be able to do that. Given its reluctance to move while consciously observed, it might be a form of macroscopic quantum mechanics. Yeah, I know what that means. I found your note, Melray. Kindly count me among this moon's admirers. What is happening when it disappears? I doubt it ceases to exist. Does it move to another location? I believe so. Not only does the moon appear around Brittle Hollow, I can confirm it sometimes orbits Timber Hearth as well. It travels the solar system. It's not just here. It was discovered here. We saw it here, but it moves all over. Wait. This one talks about here, but I don't think the beam, I say beam, I don't think the hourglass, as we'll call it, actually passes over this. 
Now, what are you tracking? Maybe it's moon? It seems possible. Okay, we've burned a lot of time. Whoops, not what I wanted. Okay, this is something we gotta learn now. How do I refuel you? Ah, here we are. Refuel jetpack. Nice. We can presumably also heal there as well, if need be. Ah, it's right there. I see. Okay, so it's right around the back of the... of the backside. Alright, back down here. Now we know that there is that ghost material here. And what we have to do is go over to here and over to here. All right. Now you open up. I'm not sure how much sand will have piled up. We've still got some time to kill. We've just got to move fast. So much deeper than I thought. Actual Nomai ruins. A place they actually lived. There is so much we could potentially learn from here. I was gonna jump down, but I, I've come to associate these crystals with ghost matter. Is that true? There is some here. There is some. Got to avoid it carefully. It's got something to do with these crystals. Yeah, we can't advance into there. And that sand is quickly rising. There's something here. Oh, this is going to be something for later. But we can refuel here. Should we build the sun station to power the Ash Twin project? Are there other ways to generate this level of power? Theoretically, yes. Practically, no. I can't imagine discovering them in our lifetimes. I understand this proposal is unsettling, but the Sun Station must be built if we hope to complete the Ash Twin project, so they needed something to power all of this. I almost can't comprehend this as being suggested seriously. The purpose of the Sun Station goes against every standard we hold ourselves to, and everything we believe in as a species. If we fail, and the probability of this is not insignificant, we will without question destroy ourselves, all life here, and the rest of this star system. I wish to protect these species. The potential annihilation of an entire star system is too severe a cost. We shouldn't build the sun station no matter how badly we want the knowledge that comes with it. Fear of failure is a poor reason not to try. I believe, if we're cautious, the sun station will work. I believe in Pi. Poke, I'm deeply honored. Idea. I comprehend your position. However, if we aren't all but certain the sun station will not cause destruction once we built it, then I won't support the station's use. This is how heated their disagreements get, huh? They really were an amazing group of people. Unsurprisingly, Idea, I disagree. We're pushing a possible new technology further than ever before. That, in my experience, is the defining characteristic of our species. You're all just so good to each other. Uh, maybe we can still get out. So it's not just the sun collapsing on itself. There's a whole host of timed mechanics, including the sand. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. They didn't make it out. Up here. Nope. Maybe we can buy ourselves a little bit more time. Uh, if we take this out, we're still okay here. Oh, they all died in their dwellings. I wonder if something happened suddenly, or... If there was something, I don't know, like trapping them down here. Like if they got caught in here during a sand flood. This 
event must not be something that happened while they were here. Then again, they did talk about the sand rising at the cave entrance. Oh, we don't have very much time to figure this out. All right, let's get out of here. There's still plenty more to revisit here, but I'm almost out of time for this part. I'm definitely going to keep playing, though. I'm still playing the same session as the first part, and I want to keep I want to keep going. I can't put this game down. You guys were so right about this. As soon as I realized what was happening with those seemingly random deaths, I was like, oh, man, I'm not going to even want to play this. That hasn't been the case at all. I am enthralled with this. I need to know more. You're going to hear some variation of that statement many, many times throughout this Let's Play. But by the time you see this, there's already going to be like four or five parts recorded. Alright. Well, we've gotten out of there. The sun probably doesn't have very long. Not that I can tell from looking. But let's actually observe its final stages so that we can see what that actually looks like. I mean, we saw it once at the end of the first part. But now that we know what we're looking at, yeah. You're just going to get bigger and brighter and redder until eventually you collapse on yourself and consume the entire solar system. Maybe that's what's happened. Maybe something about their project didn't work. I mean, of course this happens naturally, but maybe that's what occurred. I mean, something clearly didn't work out for them, and maybe whatever reaction that happens is in some way cyclic? If we do have more time before it goes, maybe we can head back to that bramble and see if we can't send our scout in there now that we know how to do it. I see something out there. A twinkle in the distance that's now fading away. I wonder if that's not maybe the rock, or something else altogether. Let's match our velocity and try and land back where that bramble seed landed. That seems like a pretty big threat to our star system if it weren't for, well, the literal apocalypse. And that's a good landing. Jebediah would be proud. And Valentina, the other pilot. Now let's see about this place. Howdy. I've got just the tool for the job. Wow, it's like it goes down and down and down. Like its roots are tunneling into the earth. And there's... What is that? What is that? That... It's hard to say, but it looks like it's been swallowed by some huge... That looked like a face of some... I don't know how else to say it. Some monster. And no, you don't. Man, I love the idea of the scout launcher. I mean, it's like I said before. It's that secondhand horror of seeing something that we know is just beneath us, but we're not directly seeing... And we're only left with impressions that could potentially be wrong, I suppose? But who knows? Uh, looks like we can send another one down this way. There's actually multiple things venting light. Oh, somebody get James Cameron. There it is again. 
It almost looks like it has some kind of light on its head, like an anglerfish. Maybe that's the source of this glow. Alright, bring you back. I imagine the rest of these will give us much the same result, right? Oh, we can actually talk to you about it. I threw a little scout into the seed. And you're telling me it's bigger on the inside than the out? This is going to be a chore to chop up, make no mistake. Can we even remove a seed that doesn't have the decency to stay the same size all the way through? Maybe I better grab an axe or three, just in case. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I could distract you. Real glad. Real glad indeed. We need to figure out how to get rid of this thing before it consumes our planet. Maybe we'll need to travel to Dark Bramble in order to learn the source and how to stop it. We've also got plenty more to explore on Ember Twin. Sooner or later we'll have to figure out what that thing is. And why was that lost astronaut's signal coming from the Bramble Seed? So many questions still to be answered, but unfortunately I'm at the end of my record limit. Though, like I said, I am going to keep playing in this sitting. Until next time, when we can hopefully learn more, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.